Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, and Velociraptors. These animals are constantly pulled as the top three most famous search for dinosaurs, but one of these is not like the others when it comes to public perceptions versus reality. Sure, how we view the Tyrannosaur is perhaps without feathers, and they may see an animated version when they think of a Triceratops, but the image I had of a Velociraptor growing up wasn't an image of a Velociraptor at all, but rather of a Deinonychus. Before looking at the Deinonychus, let's first look at the Velociraptor, a real Velociraptor. A theropod that lived about 75 to 70 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period, it, like the Deinonychus, was of the genus Dromaeosaurid, a genus of feathered carnivores that peaked during the Cretaceous period. The Velociraptor, which in Latin means swift Caesar, or quick plunderer depending on the translation, was only 2 meters in length and weighed about 30 pounds, so about 6 to 7 times smaller than the raptors found in Jurassic Park or related media. But despite its size, it was still a vicious creature. While viewed as a deadly killer, evidence shows that they were likely scavengers too, attacking and eating wounded or dying animals if the chance arose. We can see their deadly work encapsulated in the Fighting Dinosaur fossils discovered in Mongolia in 1971, where Protoceratops is taking a claw through the eye before being buried alive by sand or whatever happened that led them to being buried mid-fight. So were dinosaurs that media dreamt up for us and gave me so many nightmares as a kid a lie? From Dino Crisis to Jurassic Park, our understanding and view has definitely changed since these pieces of media came out. But what gave us the idea that a Velociraptor was ever any different than a small bird? When did the name Velociraptor start popping into our heads when thinking about a Deinonychus? Deinonychus is Greek for terrible claw, which it was given the name by John Ostrom, who first discovered this species in 1969. Skip forward a couple of years and a writer by the name of Michael Crichton met with Ostrom when doing research on the book Jurassic Park. He asked Ostrom about the animal's physical abilities and what they might act like, basing the raptors in the book almost completely off what we knew at the time of Deinonychus. Crichton, in an apologetic way, explained that in the novel he decided to use the name Velociraptor that I had said was the closest relative to the animal that I had found, Ostrom told the Times. He said, it's more dramatic. And I said I recognize that most people don't understand Greek. Deinonychus is a pretty sexy name when you think about it, he says. It means terrible claw, and that's pretty damn dramatic. So Crichton changed the name of one dinosaur to another, but why wasn't there more backlash or confusion? Well, while Crichton was researching for Jurassic Park, the paleo artist Gregory S. Paul wrote a book called Predatory Dinosaurs of the World, which would release two years before Jurassic Park. Crichton said the book drew on the information for his own book, and that the art depicted by Paul also influenced the visual look and feel of the dinosaurs that we see in the Jurassic Park film. In Paul's book, he combined Deinonychus enteropus with the genus Velociraptor, essentially reclassifying Deinonychus as Velociraptor enteropus. The difference between the two animals are too big to allow such a reclassification, so the name never stuck. It didn't make sense and had to be thrown out. Despite this, Crichton used the name Velociraptor described the theropods in his book, which would have a ripple effect on pop culture for a long time to come. The success of such thrilling killers spawned media and pop culture all over to use these animals, Velociraptors, which weren't Velociraptors at all, but instead, the dinosaur world's most famous hidden secret, the Deinonychus. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more content. We'll be doing more content like this, more on other animals, and if you have any suggestions, leave a comment below, and we'll see you guys next time.